This is the Hobbs Go Hobbs Cart, an e-bike that claims to go 28 miles an hour and up to 60 miles on the charge. We brought it into the Tool Show Labs where we're going to carefully measure its speed, acceleration, braking, range, and more. Then we'll put the results into our score sheet, calculate the values, and find out where it lands on our tool list. Let's go. Hey guys, I'm Rob, and this is The Tool List, where we test without the bias intervention of humans and score things using a custom algorithm that gets more accuracy the more we test. Today, we're continuing our e-bike series with this. This is the Hobsco Hobcarp. It's a front suspension, fat tire cargo bike with a 750 watt rear hub motor, a 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery, a claim top speed of 28 miles an hour, and a range of up to 60 miles, presumably with a lot of pedaling. Now, a cargo bike is designed for moving you and a lot of other things wherever you need to go. And this one is a very versatile cargo bike, and you can get your own for around $2,000 today. Always check the website for the latest price though. Before we get into our performance testing, we're gonna highlight its features, all of which are calculated into the final score. And we're starting with brakes. The hop cart has hydraulic disc brakes, which use fluid that transfer the force from the brake lever to the caliper. This is most often more powerful, longer lasting, and requires less maintenance than a traditional mechanical brake. And we're pretty happy to see them on the hop cart. Next, we look at the size of the brake discs. On a heavy e-bike, we wanna see at least 180 millimeters, which is exactly what we find on the hop cart. Next, we're moving on to safety and starting with headlights. Now we offer points for including a headlight, which we think is incredibly important on an e-bike you plan to drive around in traffic. There are extra points if the headlight is bright enough for us to actually ride at 20 miles per hour in the dark. The hop cart's light will definitely help you be seen, but it only shines about two meters in front of you. You'll need around 10 meters if you want to ride in the dark at 20 miles per hour. And of course, the tail light's important too. It's pretty normal to find a light on the back of these e-bikes, but there are bonus points to be had if it also acts as a brake light. The Hopcart's tail light is indeed a brake light as well. Next up is suspension. You're likely going to find a set of suspension forks on the front of each e-bike. This will smooth out bumps and just make your ride more comfortable. Some bikes will have additional suspension in the rear, but the hop cart does not. We also look for adjustable suspension for different size riders, which the hop cart thankfully has. Next, let's cover throttles and pedal assist. Now, most bikes will have a throttle, either a twist grip like you find on a motorcycle or a thumb throttle, which you operate with your thumb. The hop cart has a thumb throttle. Now, it's not our favorite, but it works. The real highlight here is the pedal assist. Now, pedal assist is either activated by a cadence sensor or a torque sensor. But as we explained in our last e-bike test, there are two very different types of pedal assist. There's a cadence sensor, which is triggered by pedaling, or a torque sensor that measures the amount of force you put into pedaling and automatically applies a bit of help, making it easier for you to pedal no matter your speed. Cadence sensors are less expensive, but also less intuitive. Essentially, they push your bike to a predetermined speed no matter how fast you're pedaling. That can be more annoying than helpful, but the Hobsco Hobcart has the highly coveted torque sensor and it works brilliantly. You just set how much help you want and the system does the rest. You just pedal like normal, but you feel like Superman when you do. This is a huge bonus for the Hobcart and a significant number of points that we reward for it. Let's talk about the battery, specifically the battery size. This bike comes with a 720 watt lithium ion battery. That puts it at the very bottom of our chart. With such a capable setup, we really wish it had a larger battery. Two of the bikes we tested had literally double the battery capacity. But as we always point out, that's only an issue if you need to take it beyond its range. We'll get to the range in a moment. Of course, the size of your battery doesn't matter if it's empty. Each bike comes with a charger rated by how many amps it outputs. The more amps, the quicker you're back on the road. The Hobsco Hobcart comes with a three amp charger, which was tied for second among the bikes we tested so far. Based on its battery size, you're looking at just about a 5.3 hour charge from zero to 100. Not bad. Up next, weight. Now these bikes are heavy, not just because of the batteries, motor and electronics, but because the frames have to be strong enough to support all of that as well, which makes the frames heavier too. The hop cart weighed in at 86.1 pounds where it came in third. That's a lot of weight for sure, but thankfully all these bikes offer a walk mode that will power the bike slowly up a hill when you walk next to it. Now for our audience, we know storage is important. If you're going to use this bike to replace your car or truck on a nice day, you'll need places to safely store your stuff. And quite frankly, the hop cart does this better than any other bike we've tested so far. The hop cart does have a front rack available, but it's an $89 accessory. But it actually comes with this excellent rear rack already installed. 
But what you're seeing is one of the optional child seats, which includes the rails, floorboards, and a seat cushion for 380 bucks. Now we didn't include the price of this kit in our testing, but we couldn't help installing it because Sarah has two little ones who fit on this thing perfectly. And I'll tell you, they love it. If you have one or two little ones, this bike will be a huge hit with them. There are also rear baskets available for around $139. The Hob Cart has a seven-speed Shimano gear shifter and derailleur. As it turns out, all six of the bikes that we have tested so far have the same number of speeds, which left us a bit disappointed. When you're really pushing these bikes at speeds over 20 miles per hour, even seventh speed will leave you pedaling like Fred Flintstone on the freeway. A higher gear would go a long way. We're still not really sure why they don't include them. Next, we have height range. We bottom out and then extend the seat to the maximum recommended height and measure the difference. The hob cart can be adjusted from 31 inches to 40 inches tall, a range of nine inches in total, which ties it for second. Now, we don't have a good way to test cargo capacity without purposefully destroying the bikes. During our endurance and acceleration testing, we put around 480 pounds of weight across the bike in our test trailer, and all six bikes manage that just fine. So we're going to trust the manufacturer's numbers on this one. The cargo capacity of the hob cart is rated at 450 pounds, which made it tie for first right alongside its Hobsco Hob Alpha sibling. Now the hob cart is technically a class three with a throttle, which would explain the claimed top end of 28 miles an hour. But as you'll see in our performance testing, we couldn't get it past 25 while pedaling. On the performance testing, first up, let's look at acceleration. For this test, we wanted to use the throttle only to get from zero to 15 miles an hour as fast as we could. But we also know that people of all weights and sizes would be using this bike, so to better test it, we aim for the extreme of both ends. I would run each test with the large trailer loaded with weight first. All together, we weighed in at 480 pounds. Then for the other end, we've got her. Some say she can pedal with her hands and her helmet is a permanent part of her head. All we know is she's called the twig and at only 120 pounds, she's likely going to get moving faster and go farther on a charge. Let's get testing. We learned early on that you can rarely trust the computers on these bikes. So instead we're using GPS GNSS performance analyzers to get accurate speed and time. With a hop cart loaded to a full weight, it took 12.68 seconds to get to 15 miles an hour. Winning it the coveted first place so far in our testing. Next, the twig took a turn and things improved dramatically. She was able to hit 15 miles an hour in only 4.08 seconds which again, landed it in first place. The best times we've tested yet. The manufacturer claims its motor is rated at 85 Newton meters of torque, and we don't doubt it. Moving on to top speed. To get this number, we turned them all on to their highest assist, and I pedaled as hard as I could on a very flat surface. The hop cart has some trouble here. As a class three bike, its computer will only assist me up to 28 miles an hour before cutting out, and this one did exactly that. Unfortunately, the computer was wrong about how fast it was going. While the screen said 28 miles an hour, we never got past an actual 25. Now we reached out to Hobsco and they admitted on an issue where the computer thinks it has 26 inch wheels instead of 20 inch. In other words, as of today, it tops out at 25 miles an hour, but they promise an update is coming that will fix this setting and unlock the 28 miles per hour we all know it's capable of. Until then, our testing revealed 25 miles an hour, so that's reflected in the score, and leaves the hop cart tied for third place. Now once you're going that fast, you're gonna want to stop fast too. To test the brakes, I sped each bike up to 15 miles an hour, and then applied both brakes as hard as I could. The hop cart was able to come to a stop in only 7.5 feet, which was outstanding. That was the fastest in all of our testing so far, putting it in first place. And finally, let's talk about range. Hobsco says you should be able to get around 60 miles on pedal assist mode. Since we can't reliably pedal, we set each bike to 20 miles an hour and ran the full battery out at 20 miles an hour on throttle alone. Each bike was run around our three mile test circuit that simulates a typical city commute with lots of speed adjustments and turns. I would ride it first with my 480 pound setup and run the battery down until the bike quit. Then we would completely recharge it and have the twig do the same. With a full battery and a heavy load, I was able to get 14.88 miles, putting it in last place, obviously due to it having the smallest battery of the whole group. 
the Twig was able to get 28.9 miles, predictably last place in the chart as well. To determine efficiency, we took the Twig's range numbers and calculated how many watt hours it was burning through per mile, and it came out to 24.86 watts, earning it third place for efficiency. And finally, let's talk about value. To assign a value score, we took the current price of each bike and then tallied up all the bike's other points and then divided those points by the dollar amount. While our resulting number is arbitrary to you, it allows us to generate a rank you can understand. In this case, the Hobbs Go Hop Cart earned a value score of 5.1, which puts it in fifth place for value. Now, I want to remind you of something. All of these e-bike companies regularly put these bikes on sale. As an example, on Black Friday, this guy was as low as $15.99. And at that price, when we adjust it on our charts, it moves up to second place overall. Just something to keep in mind. All right, so now we're done examining the features, testing the performance, and even measuring its values. When we add all those scores up, we get a final score that ranges between one and 10. If you'd like to learn more about our adaptive scoring system, check out our first e-bike review where we go more in depth. With everything calculated, the Hovcart gets an even 8.0, which puts it in fourth place overall. Now, an 8.0 is still a very respectable score, and like we said, if you're looking to ride a few little ones around with you and want a torque sensor for the best possible pedal assist experience, you simply can't beat this thing. In the coming days, we'll be publishing a video for each of these other five e-bikes right here on the tool list, and shortly after that, we'll launch our first class of power tool testing, drill drivers. You won't want to miss it. Now, once again, I wanted to remind you that we realize our adaptive scoring system is a complex feature that kicks out very easy to understand scores. At least that's the goal. But it's important that this system helps people make informed purchases or why else do it? So if you have any ideas, critiques, or questions about our testing process, please leave it in the comments and I'll do my very best to answer each one. And finally, full disclosure, while our testing is all unbiased, we feel obligated to let you know that the bike was provided to us free by Hovsko, specifically for this testing, with the understanding that we don't control the test nor the scores. Consequently, the participating brands have no say in our scoring or content. That's it for this one. If you'd like to learn more about the Hovsko Hovcart, we'll link to the Hovsko website in the description. I'll see you next time.